This video is about using only strong, unguessable passwords to help secure your admin area of your WordPress site. It takes way less than five minutes to generate a strong, unguessable password. Here, watch. Let me go ahead and bring in my handy dandy text document here. This doesn't even require a timer. A couple of letters, a couple of capital letters, a few numbers, some special characters, and a minimum of eight to 12 characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we are good as gold. We've got 13 characters using both upper and lowercase letters, some numbers and some special characters in there, and you put this into any password strength indicator and it's going to rank perfectly. So way under five minutes. And it's not that difficult, but remembering that password might be the tricky part. And if you have several or more WordPress sites, it gets even trickier. Now, this is where password managers are a lifesaver. Two very good password managers are called LastPass and RoboForm. Both have paid and free options, and there are plenty of guides on the web to set either one up for you to use in just minutes. So there's zero excuses in not being able to both generate and manage all of your strong and unguessable passwords. For example, if we were just to do a search here for how to use LastPass, you're going to have a little over a million choices. And if you wanted to narrow that down, because maybe you're more visual like me and you want only videos, you're still going to have an abundance of options. Same thing here, how to use RoboForm. Again, plenty of options. And these are just the videos. So now there, again, is no excuse whatsoever why you should be using your password or no password or password as your strong, unguessable password. So whether you opt for the free or the paid version of either LastPass or RoboForm, do it and use it. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on generating strong and unguessable passwords in less than five minutes. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. One way to help in securing your WordPress site is to make it as difficult as possible for the bad people to break in. Duh. One way to do this is to avoid using the default database prefix WP underscore. Now, if you have not yet installed WordPress and you have access to the one-click install program called Softaculous, then you can make this change before you even install WordPress. You can also change the database prefix manually after you have WordPress installed. The manual way is best done on a new install, but you can still do it on a seasoned site just as easy. If, however, you're not one to get your hands dirty, then there are plugins you can install on your already installed WordPress site that can do all the heavy lifting for you. These plugins might be a little bit iffy, and they come with a little bit of a learning curve. I myself prefer the easiest way possible, but in case something breaks along the way, I'd also like to have some idea where to look in order to fix it. So this video is going to show you how to manually edit your database prefix in less than five minutes. However you decide to alter your database prefix, you want to have a fresh full backup of both your files and database before doing this. Now that you have your new backup created, let's go ahead and log into our server's control panel. And in this demo, I'm going to be using the control panel cPanel. Oh, wait, before we do that, I want to show you that this site does work and that hopefully it'll do the same thing once we're done editing our database prefix. So let's come on over to cPanel and we want to come on down here to our PHP My Admin. And we want to, oh wait, yep, if you've got multiple databases then you want to make sure you're editing the right one. Now one way to make sure you've got the right database is to come on back here to File Manager on your control panel. Click on File Manager Come on down to the wp-config.php file, select that, click on Code Editor, and then Edit, and then right here is the name that we're going to be editing. So that would be the 248, that's going to be this guy right here. Now I also want to mention, I'm going to go ahead and leave this guy open because once we change the name of our prefix on our database, we have to come back to our config file and change it here as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this guy open. Come on back here. Oh, and before we get things started, let me bring in my timer here just to show you it is going to be done in less than five minutes. Matter of fact, spoiler alert, I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this. So let's go ahead and click on this. Wait, let's start the timer first, make it official. 
Okay, now let's click on this. Come on in here, and of course, a lot of this is going to depend on your internet speed because there is some downloading and uploading involved. But let's come over here to export and click on go. Navigate to the location on your computer where you want to download this SQL database to. Okay, that's done. Let's get this out of the way. Open up that directory because we don't really want to work on the one we just downloaded. We want to keep that as a kind of a backup. Let's go ahead and click on copy and paste. Actually, I'll keep this guy name copy as the backup and we'll open this guy up with Notepad or WordPad. Notepad will work just as well, but it looks like gibberish. So let's go ahead and use WordPad because there's some formatting involved here. Come on up here to Home. Go to Replace. And find what? We want to find the WP underscore and we want to replace it with our new one which is oh let's give it a name GOTU underscore and replace all now if you've got a whole lot of funky plugins installed and activated and it's a real seasoned site you may want to go ahead and replace one at a time because some plugins will use WP underscore a couple of times in the path of that plugin and you only want to change the first instance within that path not all of them so when you click on replace all, anything in here that has WP underscore, it's going to change. So you may want to do this one at a time if you've got a seasoned site. If it's a brand new site with minimal plugins, boom, do that. And we're done. Okay, now then let's go ahead and cancel this. Let's go ahead and make sure, let's go through here. Yeah, okay, so we got that one changed. So we've got that one changed, we got them all changed. Click on save, so we're good. Click out of here. We know that guy is still okay and intact, so let's go ahead and upload this back into our database. Get this out of the way. Come on back up here. And let's go ahead and select all of these guys here. Let's clean out our database right now, because these are all still the under WP underscores. And with all those selected, we want to drop them. Get them out of here. Click on Yes. And they're gone. Now we want to come up here to Import choose file that's the guy right there come on down here click on go and we're good click on refresh just to make sure come on back here to our wp-config file change that to gotu underscore come up here and click on save and that should be good and come over here to our blog and refresh and if it's not broke and it's going to work. Cool. And we've got, what, three minutes? Okay, so we're good to go. Now, another way to do this, since I've got a little bit of time left, if you come on back over here, come on back up here, we can select all of these files, or tables, rather. Come over here to With Selected, Replace Table Prefix. Click on that. And right here, go from GOTU underscore to WP underscore or whatever you want WP T underscore click on submit and there you are refresh come on back here what is that WP T underscore click on save come on back here refresh and it's still working so that's two ways for the price of one in both ways we're done in under five minutes and how you can change the, your database prefix from the WP underscore to whatever you want that's going to bring us to the end of this video on editing your database prefix in under five minutes thanks for watching and you have a great day I heard someone once describe a WordPress hacker like that of a low-level burglar that would go into an apartment building and walk up and down the halls and just turn the doorknob of every single door they walked past. If the door opened, they walked in. If it was locked, well, they moved on to the next one. They would not just stand there and break down the door or pick the lock. If the basic precaution of locking the door was not done, then they took advantage of it and walked on in and burgled. Same with the majority of the WordPress hackers. If you just take care of at least the basic level of securing your site, then you'll be much better off than those that do not.
This video will walk you through some of those basics that everyone should do in securing their site and we're going to do it in under five minutes. Now first off we're going to go through and just do some basic house cleaning because we do not want the average hacker to come by and see that this is a new install by seeing on the main page the hello world which is the default post that comes with every single fresh install because if they see this they might go into thinking that there are certain vulnerabilities that you have not yet taken care of so we want to first go through and get all, get rid of the default post the default page and anything else in there that might need to be basically cleaned up so let's go ahead and log into the dashboard area and I've already done that here you can do that by putting your URL forward slash WP admin or WP login.php and if you have not logged in recently then you get a little pop-up box here that requires you to put your username and password in there and then you'll end up on this page here now right down here by the way you can see that we are on version 3.5.1 that'll come in handy here in a second so just kind of make a mental note of that so first off we want to go into post and pages wait a minute before we do that let's bring in my timer here so I know that this is going to be done in less than five minutes there we go let's go ahead and click this guy get him started and by the way a little hint if you go into users and click on add new and create a new administrator account then delete the default admin username administrator account then that will automatically delete all of the associated posts and pages that were assigned to that original admin that is of course if you don't reassociate them with the new one that said let's go on into post go to all posts and really you shouldn't have admin as your username anyway that's a major no-no and let's go ahead and get rid of the hello world trash that one Come on into pages, get rid of the sample page, that's the default guy there, trash that one. And while we're in the cleanup mode, we wanna, oh yeah, and if you're in an older version of WordPress and you've got the old blog roll thing that was uh, defaulted, installed on your site, go ahead and get rid of all those links in there too. I never liked them anyway, but eh, some people do. If you don't, then I'd say get rid of them. Come on into plugins and the themes and make sure that you've got all your most recent updates done. And you do that by coming up here to, to the dashboard, going to updates. This will show you all of them, not just the plugins. So if you got themes you need updated, you can take care of that too. Let's go and get rid of this guy here, get him fully updated. And that's also where you can see the updates for the core of WordPress as well. That would be right here. But you can see here where we've got the most recent going right now. Now then, that said, if we do not have the most recent, then you want to make sure that you're not telling the world what version of WordPress you're using because you have certain updates of WordPress to plug certain security holes. And if a hacker sees that you're using 2.9 or 3.2 and they know of a potential security measure there that they can take advantage of, then they're going to. So you want to make sure that if you're not using the most recent version, which you should be, but maybe you got a client that swears by version 3.2 or whatever, you want to hide that version from being shown to the world. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we right click, go to view page source, I'm going to control F to do a find. Let me get this guy out of the way here. And I'm going to find 3.5.1. And we see we've got four instances of that right here. So we want to get rid of these four instances right now. And we do that by logging into our cPanel control panel. You can do the same thing by going to an FTP client. Go to File Manager. Oh, and by the way, while I'm in File Manager, there's a couple of files in here we can get rid of too. The README, this is the root directory of our WordPress install. Select the README and the config-sample. Delete those. Hang with me, I'll get back on track in a second. Go to the WP-admin. And let's get rid of the install files here. That's the helper and the install PHP file. Select those two, delete those. Now then let's get on back to our functions. That's in the, yeah, we want to go to the themes. WP-content, themes, open that up. And I'm in the 2012 theme right now. We want to come on down to the functions.php, select that. Go to code editor, edit that, and we've got two bits of code that we want to install here to make those bits of code invisible, or the uh, versions invisible. So we come all the way down to the bottom of the code here, 
put our cursor right there and we're going to paste this code in there you can freeze the video if you want just to copy this stuff down we want to remove the the WP version meta tag and from the RSS feed and we want to remove the versions from any other stuff that's showing it like the style.css come on up here and save changes now you want to come on back here and let's close this guy out here refresh that and then let's take a view of that source page again and control F get you out of the way there and see how many we got zero for zero so that's going to clean things up for us both on the front end the back end and in some of the coding in the root directory as well now of course there's a few other things you might be able to do but for the basics this is what we're looking at and we were able to do all this in under five minutes so now there's no excuse not to lock your door thanks for watching this video and you have a great day